with the grace of Christ, brethren, we will continue the series of our lessons, the science of governance through the word of God. As God has appointed for us to be stewards from the one hand of the multiple grace of God. Since the grace of God is multiple in our lives, but also of the mysteries of God, that is of the hidden plans and events and things that take place in the spiritual realm. Today, with the grace of Christ, we will read from the Epistle of Paul to the Ephesians, from chapter 1 and verse 15. Chapter 1 and verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us, who believe, according to the working of His mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in the sage, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the earth, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. The Apostle Paul, having the revelation of God, knows, I would dare to say, he knows everything regard the spiritual things. He can explain all the things that are happening, and to say this even better, all the things that happened, that are happening, and that they will continue to happen in eternity. Since God, in the beginning, He created the heavens and the earth. And I repeat, He created the heavens and the earth. He made the heaven for His eternal dwelling and the earth for a temporary dwelling of the most beloved and most glorious, though um, uh, creation, um, though. This creation lacked many things, and I'm saying glorious not for the present time, that is, for the natural condition of man, but for all the things that God has prepared for him in the future. And the plan of God for the man in the future is is the eternal presence 
that is to dwell eternally in heaven with him eternally and not just to dwell eternally with him but also to rule in eternity and the spiritual realm and all the spiritual over all the spiritual powers and this is something unbelievable the the one who was a sinful and wretched man as we will see further down god this man he made him and appointed him so that he may rule in eternity over all the spiritual powers uh, over angels archangels cherubim uh, seraphim and all the heavenly um, existence uh, and for and made god men he made man to rule over them and do this um, through jesus christ because on christ on on the man jesus christ was given this immense authority on heaven and on earth this immense authority and which god made him king of kings and lord of lords and the great mystery and miracle which god appointed is that um he created a bride for his only begotten son which also in christ jesus will rule in eternity and the bride that god has appointed to be created is the church of christ which is the body of christ and that is the fullness um the church that is us of course not only us but all the church and which we also belong at some point and from this time it will consist the fullness of everything who is the one who fills everything this is only the almighty god and the fullness and that is the perfection and the glory i would dare to use this word which god used the word of god for jesus christ the 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 great expression of god which will consist which the bride will consist the elect one in eternity and all these things happen according to his divine intention since before the creation of the world before he created anything he is an amazing creator he doesn't create things by seeing and doing but he plans completely the beginning and the end as all wise people do a mechanic he doesn't plan the foundation and then he finishes and then he says we'll we'll see what we'll do but he completes his plan till the last detail of the house of the building and all the wise people the scientists in this world they make plans without a plan and without programming the man is useless he can do nothing and of course this ability to plan is something that god gave to man since he made man from the beginning to be according to his likeness and his image but god before the creation of the world appointed uh, rather he chose man to be holy he chose people to be holy through jesus christ in the love of god what well, does it mean to be holy that is separated and per perfect because the man from the moment that he's reborn he is not corrected god doesn't correct um old things but he throws it away and makes new things i repeat this as uh, and the old world he didn't correct him when he came to the fullness of sin when there was um, at the time of noah but he destroyed that and he made all things new and in the end this world back at that time he destroyed it through f the flood but now he will destroy this world as it is because all these things will pass away only the word of god abides forever and the church of christ and this world he will destroy it and this is um coming he will destroy it with fire 
and the elements of the universe will will melt, will dissolve. So God doesn't destroy, but he creates like the wise man. He destroys and then he builds up. There is not an old building where uh, where he builds something else. He cleanses, he destroys, uh, throws away, he makes new foundation and then he creates a new dwelling place. He makes all things new. And that's exactly what he does for a man. And this is the exceeding zeal and the exceeding glory of the grace of God. So he takes man, the troubled man, the miserable, the wretched one, who is under the misery that rules in this world since the ruler of this world is the devil. A man, he takes the death, the death when uh, that God prophesied when he said to Adam and Eve, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because till that point Adam and Eve knew only about good. But if you learn about bad, about evil, then this will put you to death. When a man knows evil, then this put him to death. If you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then definitely you will die. And of course, these people lived uh, um, 800 years more. They didn't die immediately, but eventually they died. Not the physical death, which is the separation of the soul from the body, but they died the spiritual um, death, which is a separation of man, of the inner man, um, to say it even better, from the Almighty God, which is the Father and the Creator of all things and of, um, of man as well. And when the man is separated from the Heavenly Father, then he's orphaned, he's unprotected. And it's not just that he's separated and that he loses the presence of God because God is light and God is love. It's not that he just loses the love of God, but he also loses light and he finds himself in darkness. He also loses life and he is found in, in death. And he also loses the truth and he is found in lie. He loses everything and he is found at nowhere. In a dark um, in a deep darkness he doesn't know where to go he's troubled uh, full of passions and desires uh, of uh, sicknesses of the soul and of the spirit he's full of pain without having comfort but God has appointed that this man may listen the gospel of Jesus Christ and believe in Jesus Christ the son of the living God because faith comes by hearing and, and by hearing the word of God and when the man believes in the word of God when he'll believe in the revelation of God that Jesus Christ the Nazarene is the son of the living God that he's the incarnated word of God uh, the, that he's the God who came and flesh, if he believes and calls his name, the name of Christ, by saying very simply, Christ, save me. When God saves him, from what does he, sa uh, does he save him? He saves him from everything, from the troubles of this life, of his flesh, from the troubles of this life, of his soul, and from the troubles of this life, of the spirit of man. Because the man is, is troubled in the soul, spirit, and body. And his trouble is complete. His affliction is complete. He is um, in desperation and depression. Eventually he grows old and the last, last comes death. But God loves man. For this reason he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Golgotha for his sins. And then to raise him up for his justification. So the man who will believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. God will regenerate him. And Christ will seal him with the seal of his Holy Spirit. Which is the engagement of the heritage of the believers from the Father. Since everyone who will accept Jesus Christ. God gives to him the authority to be 
a child of God. Because all people are not children of God. They are creations of God. But when you accept Christ, then God makes you his child. And you enjoy the fatherly love of the almighty God. As a father takes care of the needs of his child. In the same way, the heavenly father takes care of our needs. Second, he takes care of for the health of his child. And that's how our father does as well. And for the progress of the child. And last, he cares for the future of his child. As exactly our Heavenly Father does. So, when the Apostle Paul heard, he, uh, heard the work that God had done uh, to the Corinthians in the church. Because in the church, we don't come because of a human invitation neither from a human initiative, ours initiative, nor because of human cleverness. In the church we come because we heard that there is Christ who saves and eventually Christ added those who, were re who have been saved in the church. If we call in the name of Christ and then we are saved from our Heavenly Father, then what Christ what Christ will do is to add us to his church, to make us members, not of a human gathering, but members of the body of Christ. So the Apostle Paul knows uh, the past, the present, but since he knows the future, he has to pray God to reveal it to him. And the Apostle Paul has a goal, and for this reason he explains to the Ephesians, that you were dead because of your trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world contrary to the believers who walk since their constitution is in heaven they walk according to the constitution of the almighty God but when you walked in the world you walked according to the course of this world according to the commandments of the prince of the power of the air which is the spirit, uh, the evil spirit, which now works in the sons of disobedience. That is, he has no authority over the children of God. The world, I would dare to say, that is separated in two spiritual uh, battlefields uh, camps. The one um, camp is the devil and ruler. Uh, the one is the world and the, the, the ruler is the devil. Where? Because of the um, unbelief of people, he blinds the man and he makes him um, like a plant that he may not be able to understand the greatness of the gospel of Jesus Christ and there is from the other hand the camp of God where King is Jesus Christ since he is the, the head of the church since he the, the church is the body of Christ and he consists and the church consists from um, each one of us which are living stones and the building that Christ makes so that he may edify his church. And last, the power of the body of um, Christ is the paraclete, the spirit of truth. Among these two comes, there is a great gap. And the one ruler is the devil and, and the other one ruler is Jesus Christ. But all of us we used to live in the camp of the devil, in the camp of the world. But God, who was full of mercy, and because of his great love with which he has loved us, it, even when we were dead because of our trespasses, and every lawlessness is sin, everything that is transgression to the word of God. Sin is not an, an insignificant uh, philosophical expression. Anything that is out of, from the word of God, anything that is lawless, this is considered to be sin before God. But also sin is uh, all uh, iniquity. Every iniquity that a man does to his neighbor, and this is counted before God as sin and sin, and the reward of sin is death. So we were, you were dead because of your trespasses and transgressions. But God loved you so much that he made you alive through Jesus Christ and with Christ. 
when you called in the name of Jesus Christ and in the presence of God not only did he make you alive and he raised you up but he also made you to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus by proving to all the ages to come to the spiritual ages to come as we said all the earthly things will be burned up and nothing will be any more so he has made you sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that he may show in the ages to come the exceeding riches of his grace because we are saved by grace by faith a man cannot be saved with his good works he can't be saved he can be saved with any action or, or his own deed the only way for him to be blessed and be saved in this life and gain the eternal life the only way is to believe in Christ and to call his name Lord Jesus Christ save me and then God comes and he regenerates us in a living hope and he gives us an inheritance that is um, blameless eternal in which we will live and rule in eternity but the point that the Apostle Paul wants to come is how we will live there how we will walk as we walked in our transgressions and our sins according to the course of this world according to the ruler um, of the prince of the power of the air of the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience as disobedient sons and as children of wrath God wants us since we are regenerated and are saved by God and as we said the man can be saved only by faith when he calls with faith the name of Jesus Christ so when God will save us and then since we become a new creation and as we said the old things have passed away we bury them with a baptism and then he creates a new creation and all things are new so since we are a new creation in Christ Jesus he has made us a new creation in order to walk in good works which God has prepared before the creation of the world for each one of us in simple words God has appointed for every man since we'll be regenerated and call upon the name of Christ and be saved and especially when he'll baptize us in the Holy Spirit so that we may be the temple of the Holy Spirit so the temple of the Trinitarian God God has appointed for us a new life a specific new course a new mission which is specific no one knows this God reveals this to you slowly slowly remember the Apostle Paul who we, whom God said by the Holy Spirit seven years after his regeneration and after him being filled with the Holy Spirit he said now separate me Barnabas and Paul for the work which I have appointed before the creation of the world so that they may serve me and then he made him the apostle of the Gentiles of the nations till that point no one knew a thing neither the devil because no one knows the future only God God has this in his plan neither Paul nor the church knew anything the church used to know that there was a persecutor which now testifies Jesus Christ and him crucified till the point came that God uh, made a revelation gave a revelation about his work but again he did not do this in detail and that's what the Apostle Paul wants to point out to the church of the Ephesians that he ha that uh, the church has a mission that God has a mission for each one of them for every family and also for this local church of the Ephesians this is very serious because if we want to understand 
the things that he, for which the Apostle Paul is praying, then we are in danger to lose our way. As the Church of the Ephesians did. This episode was written around 6065 AD and, and around 35 years later, God sent a new apostle to the Ephesians through Jesus Christ by saying, You have lost your first love. You are a very good church. You have very good works. But I am about to move your lamp. And that's how what it happened. The Lord moved its lamp. Now there is no church of the Ephesians. And whatever the word of God says, it happens. Why? That's what Paul fears, is afraid. Because when I heard... Um, about the great work that God did to you, says the Apostle Paul, I do not cease to pray for you that God may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him and the knowledge of the will of God, of the plans of God, of the presence of God. Because if you don't have a spirit of wisdom and revelation, then you will lose your way. If you don't understand who is the one who called you, for what reason he called you, and who is working in your life, then you won't be able to preserve your love till the end. Your love toward the Lord will diminish. And then you will stack and you won't reach your destination. For this reason, I pray not that you may become more clever, but that God may give you um, spirits of wisdom and revelation. And I will point out something that is absolute. Christ says, ask and it shall be given to you. If you don't ask, then nothing will be given to you. Ask. What to ask? Ask according to His will. And the first thing that the Ephesians should ask for in this situation of the blessing that God has brought them through their faith in the word of God in the face of Jesus Christ and through the love that they had shown to all the saints without any exception that is because of this characteristics he brought them to a very high and good spiritual level First of all, because they believed in Christ and in His words. And they love without having any exception. They love all the saints. But now, they need something very serious. They need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And the knowledge of God. Because if they don't understand where they are. What they are, who they are, and where they are going. And where they will reach. Then they won't be able to give all their soul. Their heart and their mind. Their, their soul, their spirit and their body. To, th to him who has called them. They will be little Christians. As I, I usually say. For this reason Paul is praying. As if he was saying pray. Um, you as well because it is necessary to understand first after the eyes of your understanding been enlightened because we don't see Christ with the eyes of our body but with the eyes of our soul for this reason the word of God says my son keep your heart because from your heart come all the outcomes in your life your eyes of heart should be enlightened so that you may know what you are asking for what makes you joyful and what makes you miserable to know what you have and what you don't have so your eyes the eyes of your heart should be enlightened so that you may know which is the hope of your calling the hope of your calling is it to make a lot of money, to get married, to, to give birth to children? All these things are good. Is your hope, uh, the hope of your calling, what is it? 
That is, and why do you hope in Christ? Because if you hope for this world, then you are worse than the unbelievers. But the hope of our calling is that Jesus Christ took her a life completely. He is the one who guides us and he should guide us. And he is the one who preserves us and he should preserve us. And the hope of our calling is that his divine power has given to us all things, not only for this life, but also for godliness. Through the knowledge of the one who has called us through his glory through which had been given to us and now this is we what is our hope of our calling the greatest and honorable promises these had been given to us God uh, made a gift to us the greatest and honorable promises through which we become now we we take part in the divine nature. And I'm saying this again. We don't want just uh, uh, for, for this life to go well. Because if we ask and hope in God only for the things of this life. Then we are worse than the unbelievers. God has called us and he has given us a hope for the greatest and honorable promises. An eternity. So that from now we should be partakers. What does, does this mean? To be one of the divine nature. Since he has revealed to us the mystery. His mystery. That he may gather all things in Christ Jesus. That he may make all things one in Christ. Those that are in heaven and those that are on earth. That is we are heavenly citizens. We are done here. I will say this again. And this uh, it was a little child, five, six years old, that impressed me a lot. I, I hacked her and, and she and I told her, Do you love me? I love you. I will get I will marry you off. And, and the girl told me no, because the Lord told me that there are a few days left. Hear this, a little child. How did this child said this? But now I what do I want? Do I want to have good years when I grow up? Do I want to have health? Is this the reason why I hope in God? No. My hope is that my God gave me the greatest and honorable promises. And if I don't understand this, then I will never reach there. I will never reach there. I will stop along the way. I will start and... Uh, and I won't have enough fuel. I will. I will stop along the way. This is and this is the first thing that he uh, they have to learn. And for this reason, he's praying. He and he's praying to God, of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's praying to the eternal Almighty God, who is the only one who can act in my heart, so that He may take out. The desires of the flesh, of the heart, and the organs of this life. And then deliver me from other hopes that I might have. And then establish me in the hope of the greatest and perfect promises. So that I may be here on the earth, partaker of a divine nature. That is a, an, indeed a man of God. Now, secondly... So that we may know which is the riches of his glory to the saints. Since everyone who has accepted Jesus Christ. God has given him the authority to be a child of God. That is to be um, heir along with Jesus Christ. And which is our heritage. If your heritage is one house, two highs, a factory. And these are, then these are too small. And not only that, but in order to take them, you have to to wait for your relatives to die. But our heritage, brethren, is the kingdom of heaven. Where we won't be 
the last people say I wish uh, I could even be the last no God says that you won't be the last you will be a king because you will be the wife of Christ you will be the glory of Christ uh, since Christ is the head of all powers now this is your heritage all the kingdom of God has been created so that you may rule over it how small these things that torture me seem to be because if I won't see how small and insignificant these things are then I won't be able to reach to the end I will go after vain things and I will never reach them but if I'm uh, I'm going after the eternal things then I will reach them and I will enjoy them why because in this last days a spiritual earthquake is going to take place because everything is shaken and the shaken things are taken away and this is a terrible thing you see your family and you see how beautiful family glory be to God but very shortly an earthquake will take place will they be from the unshakable things or will they be shakable you I will you be from the the unshakable things or from the shakable things if God will give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand the hope of our calling and our heritage then we will be from those that are will be unshakable because wherever your treasure is and our treasure is in heaven there is our heart also which is your treasure my children then you will stay down my house then again you will stay down my family then again you will stay down which is your treasure eternal life then you will go up and my beloved brethren especially these last days which many of us we want we won't die because whoever calls upon the name of Christ even the last moment he will be saved but we want um, we won't know death and then you we will hear the trumpet and in just a moment in a blink of an eye this mortal body will put on immortality this corruptible body will put on incorruptible about incorrupt incorrupt uh, become incorruptible so is it that I will see all of you going up and I'll stay down why because I haven't understood which is the calling of um, and which is the heritage of the saints in heavens and a third very essential thing is that the exceeding grace of us who believe how is God working in your life and how does God want to work in your life he wants to do that with a power that there is no greater than this it's not just the power of the Almighty but it's the greatest power which God ever used for his work even greater than the one that he used to create the heavens and the earth because to make the heavens and the earth he said a word but to make you he, his son had to die on the cross so this exceeding uh, power with which God works so that one man who became accursed on the cross of Golgotha and died first of all he raised him up with what power with the greatest possible power that the Almighty God has and with which he works um, in each one of us this is amazing God does not say that I will move my little finger this is a very really great 
work, God used all the powers for our salvation. It can, we can be saved if He doesn't use the exceeding uh, power of His, the, His exceeding power, so that He raised up Christ. He made Him sit up on, the, on His right hand, and the heavenly places, and the midst of angels are archangels, seraphims. When He brought in the firstborn, He said to the angels, "Bow down before Him." So with this great exceeding power that he made him sit together in the heavenly places and he made him above all power and authority and he gave him name above all names in this eternity and in the ages to come. And he made him sit and he gave him all authority in heaven and on earth and he gave him the name above all names before which everyone will bow down and every tongue will call him Lord. And at the same time, he submitted all things under his feet. Think about it. Which powers he used in order to submit the devil and his angels. All the powers that, are, that were under the earth and made them subject unto the feet of the slaughter lamb. With this power, he is working for your blessing and for your salvation. If you desire this. And he has submitted all things under his feet. And when he is working in order to submit all things under his feet. Then he made him head over all in the church. The church has all the authority. There is no other authority that is given from God to the earth but to the church through Jesus Christ. Why? Because the head of the church is Christ. Since he gave to Christ the name above all names, since he gave, then he gave the authority um, to all and he made him king. And he is the head of the church and he is our head as well. Then the church is the fullness of him who fills all things. That is the perfect, the, ex the exceeding expression of God. So if brethren will understand this. But we have to pray first of all. And I plead you. We shouldn't forget this. We have many petitions. But the most important. And when you realize this. And understand it. And seek it. Then you will start to see a difference. Little by little. But this will increase. And then you will go walk from glory to glory. If you ask from God. And God pleads us, I would say, as if God is pleading us. Do not forget to ask that God may give us spirit of wisdom and revelation and His knowledge. These are things that only God knows. Only God. No one else knows these things. About the hope of our calling, about our inheritance, the exceeding greatness of his uh, work. And he reveals these things to those who will ask for them. But now we came to know them. But it's a different thing to hear them. It's a different thing what we understood. And what we've learned with understanding. In order to know this with understanding. This night and many more nights. Because... It says that we do not cease to pray. He didn't just pray for one time. It says, I do not cease to pray that God may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And his knowledge. And the knowledge of him. That is to know the things that God knows. That the Holy Spirit may lead you in the depths of God. So that you may understand. The greatness of the plans of God. And then 
And this is our, our goal, the goal of Paul. And then you will be able to walk in the path that God has prepared for each one of you. By fulfilling and doing all the works, with no exception, which God has prepared before the creation of the world for each one of you. Then, you will be indeed stewards of the multitude grace of God. Anything that could this mean, and only God can reveal this to us, but also to be stewards of all the mysteries of God. What does it mean to be stewards, to be managers? That is, you'll be able to manage. We are all, um, we all get a pension everywhere, and we all think what things to do. And you start to manage and say, I will do this and that with this money, and we make a management. First of all, in our financial things, and then to ourselves, then to our family. We have to manage our children. We have to deal with our brothers and sisters. We have to deal with anything that is by our side. To this one in that way and to the other one in the other way. It's not just one um, killers or potatoes and it, it is done. Every kind of situation and every characteristic has a different way of dealing with it. And if we don't have this wisdom to deal with it, then we will fail. We have to, to, to manage our health. You can't eat daily summary and, and leave. You will die. You can't say that and if we deal with these things well, then how much more the multiple grace that has been given to us We have to manage it in the right way. And the plans of God, the mysteries of God, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, we have to manage them. But after, God will reveal these things to us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and then we will be indeed true men of God. We will be indeed the servants of God. We will be indeed the church of Christ. For this reason, brethren, let us not forget today, if we want to become good managers, if we want to have the signs of governance, we should ask from God the spirit of wisdom and revelation, because we need it, so that we may become partakers of the divine nature, and not uh, like the Ephesians which in 30 years they, they had fallen. They lost the first love, and the Lord, though He warned them, the Lord moved their lamp. We don't want our lamp to be moved, but we want our lamp to increase and to shine even more so that we may be ready in that day for the rapture of the church. So we should remember, let us not forget in our prayer, my God, please, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Amen.